So, do we have any questions from the audience? Yes, sir. Yes. I, I got a question uh, for the Perla crew, and, and then it's just a comment that I'd like to hear a response to. The question is uh, to the Perla crew um, when are we going to open the uh, Australia fire camp, and where is it going to be? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and and, and, and just my comment as well um, when they went to Hawaii and their uh, savings rate dropped down to 37%, I think it was, and then their projected uh, retirement time jumped up to like 22 years or whatever it was. I, I got quite anxious about that, and I wonder if you, <laughs> you get quite anxious about caring about you know the small things all the time, and, and if, I don't know, maybe some people find it's not necessarily worth it to, to try that hard all the time? Just a comment. Yeah, that's great. Well, first of all, that's a great comment. Um, getting back to your first question, we'll have to work through this group to see uh, when the camp will be, I think. I like that he said it was Pearl who was joined the organisation. We're trying to shift it across yeah. here. <laughs> um, what, do you, what, what are your thoughts on Well, I think um, the Moustache Inns Australia Facebook group very recently posted the idea of starting the Camp Moustache in Australia. Oh. Um, it must have been a week ago or something. Yeah. So, are you a part of that group? Or? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. I think they're really keen to get it going and if we can get enough support, then definitely a reality in Australia. It's, so, o it's October next year in Lennox Head. Ah, uh, Lennox. There you go. It's in Lennox Head. <laughs> Uh, I think your second question was roughly about uh, having some sort of a hit to your financial situation that would delay your time to fire, is that right? More about focusing on the little things all the time. Yeah, it's, it, it can be hard to balance. I mean, some people get can, can get really anal about a couple of dollars here and there, but if you, if you really focus, you've got to sort of kind of stand back a bit and focus on the big picture. And if you really have your main categories of spending sort of out like they have with the house, and the cars, and food, maybe the holidays as well, if you if you have that stuff sorted out, then you can you can kind of let the little stuff slide, but obviously not all the time because that that stuff can add up too. But it, it is a mental game sometimes balancing the little things. Yeah, can I quickly respond? Um, you're, you're probably right. It's probably like. 80% of your costs come from just 20% of the things. So, uh, yeah, that's a really good point. I know, uh, I'll, I'll just uh, uh, tell this one story. <laughs> Brandon, the mad scientist, um, he, you know, he, during his journey, pushed himself so far that he and his wife moved to like a sort of cabin in the woods in Vermont. <laughs> and he decided just to spend absolutely no money at all like in order to get to FI as soon as he possibly could. But he actually came into a depression from doing that, and he talks about that quite openly, that he pushed himself so far that his life became miserable. You know, he wouldn't even go out for a beer with friends, nothing. Um, and he had to kind of like find his calibration to, to where it was worth it, you know? And there's that thing, the latte factor, right? I don't know if you've heard that over here, but it's a US thing. Like, you know, there was this time when everybody said, well, if you just stop buying lattes or flat whites, I guess is what you guys know. Um, like, just don't do flat whites, you know, and like invest the rest, you know, invest your flat white. Um, then, you know, everything will be fine. But actually, they found in, in studies that doing that kind of deprivation work actually is less motivating than, you know, allowing yourself to find that balance. Buy a coffee machine. <laughs> um, if I may, and I know um, Miss B from Miss Balance is probably going to have to speak to this because I know she, it, she's exactly on trend, but my lovely husband Neil has been saying to me, our sanity allowance. So every month, every fortnight, both of us put $100 each on our own um, gold card, our own Qantas um, cash card, which is like a debit card. And we can spend that however we want. And so if I want to go out to a coffee, I don't drink coffee, but if I want to go out to chai latte and another friend wants to have coffee and I want to pay for them to have coffee, I want to go out for something with my girlfriends, I want to do something, I can do it, no problem whatsoever. And anything left over, I pay them for whatever I want. And I'm a big op shopper, 
love clothes, love love shopping, so that's my other kind of treat. And it is really important, I think, to have that balance. So we've just come back before I came down with this cold from a skiing trip with my 75-year-old dad and um, my husband, Neil. And while we were there, we went to a fairly expensive Italian restaurant out at Jindabyne and we took out to dinner my 77-year-old former ski instructor. And it was a lovely meal. I mean, it was just a beautiful, a beautiful evening, fantastic conversation, very inspiring. These two men in their 70s who are still active and fit for skiing. And we came home and my husband Neil, who's wiser than me, said, well, sometimes you have to live a little. And I said, yes, but you see, because I'm frugal, that's why we can afford to do that. Because if we weren't, we wouldn't be able to have these moments. So yeah, indeed, it is, I think, I've changed my attitude a lot. In my first marriage, we spent about five years where we were extremely frugal for various reasons. Um, we'd amassed 10 in investment properties or 10 properties in total, but our cash flow situation was terrible and we never went out, we never did anything. And I really came away from that experience going, well, kind of, what's the point? Like, what's the point of this numbers game if you just, you know, stressed all the time and working long hours and you're not being able to have those moments that are really important? Um, I mean, I'm still pretty frugal, uh, don't get me wrong, we live on about half of our incomes, but, you know, it definitely has brought a little bit more balance to that perspective. I suppose if, if you're on the journey and you're spending 40, 50 hours, maybe 60 hours a week working, and you're spending the rest of your free time trying to figure out new ways to save, there's not much, not much time for enjoying your life. You're going to do that for 10 years, so you can find ways to save, but you're gonna, you do have to enjoy your spare time as well, because it is really precious while you're asked to work. And just on, the, just on the restaurant thing, I think if you do go out for an expensive meal at a restaurant, that's fine, but like when you do it all the time, it becomes really meaningless. It becomes, it wears off, you know, the, the fat just kind of wears off. So if, if you do limit it to special occasions, you do really enjoy those things more. Yeah, I agree with that notion. Um, and also just about finding balance. Once you kind of realise what it is you really want to spend your money on, one of the one or two things that you'll really value and enjoy, you kind of get into a groove. Um, and I just did my spendings report for the last year compared to this year, and I spent the same amount within ten dollars without a try. So I don't, I don't 